focus of the study was to measure kids' biological responses to challenges, to observe their attentional focus and their emotional reactions and their cognitive abilities and their behaviors in all kinds of different challenging tasks. So one of the very first things that we found when we looked at these, just these toddlers, is that some children, as early as two years of age, show a capacity to be faced with a challenging situation and to be able to control their biological response to it, their attention, their emotion, and then these other children have a great deal of difficulty with that. And if you think about what happens to you when you're in a situation where you're forced to wait or you're frustrated, one of the most basic reactions you have is at a biological level. You start moving your body, you start using your hands, you start looking for ways to get rid of some of that physiological agitation. And kids do this too. We, what we see when we look at kids in situations that are challenging is we see that they're having difficulty just managing their biological response to the challenge. If you can't get past that, you are unlikely to be able to get any further with managing the task. So getting kids to understand that distracting themselves is critical. I have a, a great example of this. In one of our um, studies, we asked the children when they're two to wait for a gift that they're going to get at the end of the assessment. And they're actually given the gift, but they're told not to open it while the tester leaves the room for something. And we watched this video of this child completely, she's completely agitated by the gift in front of her. She can't have it. And she's getting, you know, completely worked up. And suddenly she looks at the carpet and then she gets it in her head to sing a song. And she begins to sing the song. And once she sings the song, she pops up off the floor, walks away from the gift, and is completely fine to wait until the tester returns. I happened to be there that day and I walked into the room and I said to the mom, that was fabulous that you're, how your daughter managed that situation. And the mom said, that's something we've been working on at home. So when the daughter has to wait, the mom says, let's sing whatever song. The mom didn't tell the child during the testing situation to sing the song. The child had learned that strategy by interacting with the mom repeatedly in situations where she had to wait. So that's just a good example of how caregivers can really structure the child's response to a challenging situation in a way that over time they internalize it. After that we followed them into adolescence. There the challenges are very different. In addition to school and peer relationships, kids have to negotiate uh, romantic relationships, um, drug and alcohol uh, use opportunities and so we started focusing in our adolescence um, assessments on more risky behavior and looking at how these self-regulatory skills can help kids negotiate those challenges um, and now we are following up the kids again I shouldn't say kids they're really young adults uh, Lori Weidman in kinesiology Cheryl Lovelady in nutrition uh, Susan Keene in psychology and our colleague Lily Shanahan at UNC Chapel Hill are doing what amounts to a, a very comprehensive um, health assessment. What we found in our data set was that self-regulation skills predicted whether a child embarked on a trajectory of weight gain over early childhood. It turns out that the way in which kids regulate their behavior in other situations also applies to um, eating, uh, nutrition and exercise. Kids who can regulate their emotions better are less likely to gain weight at the same rate as kids who have difficulty regulating their emotions. Cognitive regulation, that has to do with planning and thinking ahead. Well, planning and thinking ahead are a big part of why people eat the way they do and why they exercise the way they do. So these early, very early skills I'm talking about between the ages of two and five really had an impact on those indicators. We've also seen some relation to bl um, blood pressure measures that we have on these adolescents. So it's more than just a superficial um, psychological phenomenon. It really becomes embedded in the child's biological profile at some point in time. Mm -hmm.